Hey guys, I'm sitting here on vacation editing the last flag video that I made. The last flag I made was the Puerto Rican flag or the rustic Puerto Rican flag. And I had it ordered. I decided to go ahead and while I was making it, do the video and just show you how I made it. Now, again, it's pretty much the same as the rustic American flags, other than the strips are a little wider than the American flags. The union's a little different, but you'll see in the video. You may see some smoke floating around behind me. If so, that is from our smoker. We're having ribs for supper, and I'm looking forward to that. The family's in there taking a nap. I'm editing videos, and I thought, what better place to do an intro to this video than right here at Site 302 in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Check it out. There might be something that you're interested in. Rustic Puerto Rican flag. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is rip these boards. You can't find furring strips as wide as I needed for this project. If you could, I'm sure they would be too warped, twisted, or cupped to be able to use them. So I went ahead and bought a better grade board for this. I only needed five because there's five stripes in the Puerto Rican flag. Once I had them all ripped down and cut for length, I was able to place them and make sure that everything worked right. 26 inches high and 48 inches long. Make sure they're right before I get started. Now I will flip the boards over because the first thing I want to do is torch the back of the boards. Then I will torch the strips that will hold them together. And I will come back after that and torch the edges of the boards. In case there's any imperfections or one board happens to be a little thicker than the other, I'll make sure that it's all covered and there won't be any bright white shining there once it's put together. Okay, I will now mark for the outside strip to go on the back. Uh, I don't put it on the edge anymore. That's how I did it in the beginning on my first American flags. And now I hold it in an inch on the large flags. I hold it in three quarters of an inch on the medium flags and also on the small flags. But I'm just making a mark there so I'll know where to put the glue. Uh, I'll go ahead and clamp this thing down pretty tight and get it ready and uh, I'll go ahead and make the mark on the other end and I'll start applying the glue. Now I use a lot of glue when I put these flags together. I make sure each strip is glued sufficiently. Uh, actually I probably overdo it. Every time I put a strip on and I staple it then there's glue squeezed out on both sides, the top and the bottom. I'll just take an old rag, wipe down the excess, and move on. I don't think there will be any issues of anyone ever calling me and saying, hey, these flags are falling apart. I just don't think that's going to happen between the staples and the glue. I think they're there from here on. And just like the American flags, once I have it all put together, I will flip it over and use a scrap piece of wood with a hammer to tap the boards there to make sure the staples are seated good on the back and also make sure the boards are even. And this is a step that I started doing a while back, especially when I had some twisted boards. I would take a scrap piece like you see here to keep from marking up the front of the flag and just clamp it down good on that outside back strip and I'll just leave it clamped until the boards are dry. Once it's dry, I'll remove the clamps and move on to the next step. And the next step is to cut the scraps off here with the jigsaw. I never cut the back strips for the exact length because sometimes they could be a little different once you compress those boards together. Uh, so I just use a jigsaw, cut off the ends, and I'm good to go. And after I do that, I'll use my belt sander to smooth out all four edges. Okay, I'm marking the center on both ends. I'm going to use a straight edge just to use a mark there for guide as I make the union. I'm going to mark just beyond the halfway mark. So I'm coming this way 26 inches. That will leave 22 inches on this end. It's a 48 inch flag, so 22 inches. And then I'm going to mark from the top corner down to that center point and then up from the bottom corner to the center point and that will give me the outline for the union okay now I'm going to use a knife to scribe this line and that will help me keep the red from bleeding over onto the blue and the blue from bleeding over onto the red it's just a small line there so that I can kind of tuck the edge of the tape down in it 
since I had to buy newer boards and this is a rustic Puerto Rican flag I needed to rough it up a little bit you can do all kinds of things to antique a board but I just used a chain kind of beat it a little bit put some dents and dings in it and after that I was ready to stain it okay now I'll use painters tape to tape off for the red stripes I'm just kind of running it down the edge there of the splits. I'll tuck it down in those cracks slightly and then I'll be able to go back and stain the red or the scarlet stain. And again, this is the Minwax water-based stain and the scarlet color. And this is a really good looking color for the flags, and especially after you torch them. It gives a good rustic look. Okay, I want to get the center of this union. And to get the center, I'm marking 12 and 3 quarters inches from the bottom corner. Then I'll mark 12 and 3 quarters inches from the top corner. Now I'll take a straight edge and place it there on the top corner. Hold it down to the center line that I just marked at the 12 and 3 quarter inch mark. And mark a little line there in the center. And then I'll do the same from the bottom corner up to the other mark. And that gives me the center of this union. That's where I want to put the star. I'm going to use an 8 inch star. I'm just marking 4 inches above dead center and 4 inches below. And that will help me center it up really good. And now to break out the torch. This is a very relaxing part of making the flag uh, to me. It does bring out the heat there in the shop. But uh, it is very relaxing. I enjoy torching it. And also enjoy uh, seeing how the wood's going to torch. Every piece of wood torches or burns a little bit differently. And this scarlet red really looks good antique like this. And the 8 inch star. I cut this out of the mylar. Just like I make all the other stencils out of. And I'm very particular or kind of a perfectionist. I want to make sure everything's straight. I'll measure this thing four or five times before I actually mark it. One of the good things about this flag is that it only has one star and that should go pretty quickly. After I use the pencil to outline the star, I then use the 107 carving bit to start outlining the star with the Dremel tool. Uh, after I had it outlined with the 107, I went back with hand carving tools and started hand carving. I didn't like the way it looked by hand carving. It just wasn't as smooth as some of the other woods that I've carved. Uh, it, I do like the carved or the hand carved look, but it just wasn't going that well. You can see here I get started with the hand carving tools. Uh, it didn't take me long to determine it wasn't going that well, so I switched out to the 192 carving bit on the Dremel tool. The 192 does take out a lot more. It's just like the 105, 106, and 107. It's just much, much bigger and it takes out much more wood at one time. Here I am cleaning up what I'd already started and then going back and making it all kind of smooth there. It does take out a lot of wood but it does cut it pretty smoothly. A quick hit with the torch there on the star to antique it and then it's time to clear coat it. As you can see here the clear coat really brings out the color in the flag. My first coat of clear is always with the spray can I will go back later after this dries with a brush and put a heavier coat on. Okay, that's it. That's the finished product, the rustic Puerto Rican flag. I think it turned out pretty good and I really enjoyed the build. If you want to make one of these for yourself, go to the description below and you can see the details. All the measurements and everything that I use for the large size flag. Thank you so much for watching and as always, y'all have a great day.